NESP, A, Italian pronunciation, NE, is an Italian multinational oil and gas company headquartered in Rome. Considered one of the global supermajors, it has operations in 79 countries, and is currently world's 11th largest industrial company with a market capitalization of €68 billion, Euros $90 billion as of August 14, 2013. The Italian government owns a 30.303% golden share in the company, 3.934% held through the state treasury and 26.369% held through the Casa Depositi e Prestiti. Another 2.012% of the shares are held by the People's Bank of China. The company is a component of the Eurostox 50 stock market index. The name, ENI, was initially the acronym of Internazionale Idrocarburi, National Hydrocarbons Authority. Through the years after its foundation, however, it operated in a large number of fields, including contracting, nuclear power, energy, mining, chemicals and plastics, refining, extraction and distribution machinery, hospitality industry, and even textile industry and news. ENI constantly ranks among the top 100 on Fortune Global 500 list for largest companies by revenue. In 2016, the company holds the 65th place, a fall of 40 places from the previous year's 25th rank. In terms of share capitalization, the market value of shares, ENI is ranked 8th in comparison with the principal companies operating in the same sector Exxon, Shell, Chevron, Total, BP, ConocoPhillips, Equina, Anadarko, Apache, and Marathon Oil. Topic History Topic Nineteen Fifties to Nineteen Sixties ENI was founded and established by law in 1953 from an existing company, AGIP, which was created in 1926 with the aim to explore for oilfields, acquire and commercialize oil and derivatives. In March 1953, Enrico Mattei was nominated ENI's chairman. ENI originally was an acronym for the company's full title Internazionale Idrocarburi National Hydrocarbons Authority. After 1995, the meaning ceased to be relevant but the name was maintained. In 1952, ENI chose its own logo, the six legged dog, an imaginary animal symbolizing the sum of a car's four wheels and the two legs of its driver. Starting in 1954, ENI acquired extensive exploration rights in North Africa, signing an agreement with the Egyptian government led by Nasser while providing an active and equal role for the crude producing countries through the establishment of joint ventures. In 1957, ENI pushed for a similar agreement, known as the Mate Formula, to be signed with Persian Shah Mohammad Reza Pahlavi and the National Iranian Company. In 1960, during the Cold War period, ENI signed an agreement with the Soviet Union for the importation of Russian crude at very reasonable prices. On the 27th of October 1962, Enrico Mattei's airplane mysteriously exploded near Bascape on his way to Milan from Catania. His death was initially considered an accident, but later it was confirmed to be a murder with the aim to protect and hide important economical and political interests in Italy and especially abroad, as it is clearly stated in the records of the trial on the assassination of the journalist Mauro de Mauro, who was investigating on the death of Enrico Mattei. During the following years, ENI signed joint venture contracts with foreign companies to supply crude from Egypt to Iran and from Libya to Tunisia. In 1963, ENI acquired a majority stake in Italgas. Topic: 
Topic: 1970s to 1980s. In October 1973 after the Yom Kippur War and the OPEC embargo against the United States and the Netherlands by OPEC members and Arab countries, a serious his oil crisis occurred, causing ENI to consolidate its position in the international market by signing an agreement with Sinatric, the Algerian state oil entity for natural gas supply. In 1974 ENI signed an agreement with the Libyan government, followed by additional agreements with Egypt, Nigeria, and Tunisia. During the mid 1970s, ENI planned a major infrastructure for transporting natural gas over long distances by building a pipeline network of thousands of miles throughout Europe and the Mediterranean. After the inauguration of the Trans Mediterranean Pipeline connecting Algeria to Sicily through Tunisia, ENI signs a new agreement with Libya for the exploitation of borders the biggest oil field in the center of the Mediterranean, and develops its international role within the oil industry. Topic: 1990s to 2000s. In 1992 ENI became a joint stock company by law decree, and was listed to the Italian and New York Stock Exchange in 1995. From 1995 to 1998 ENI put four share offers fully successfully, as 70% of its capital assets were sold to private shareholders. As the price of oil collapsed in 1998 as other major companies ENI got to turn into a race through mergers international acquisitions, new explorations and the foundation of real super companies. Topic: 2000s to 2010s. Since 2000, ENI has been developing the Kashagan oil field, a major offshore discovery along the Caspian Sea. In 2005, the Blue Stream pipeline, projected to supply gas from southern Russia to Turkey, was inaugurated as a joint venture between ENI and Gazprom. In 2007, ENI signed an agreement to conduct South Stream, a feasibility study with Gazprom to import Russian gas into Europe across the Black. C. Activist asset manager Knight Vinky, who owns 1% of the outstanding shares of the company, begun pressuring Eni's management to operate a spin off of Eni's gas activities. In its opinion, this would solve the undervaluation of the company and release up to 50 billion euros, 70 billion dollars of hidden value. In 2010, ENI achieves key production milestone in Iraqi Zabair oil field after getting a license in 2006 for the exploration of an offshore area in the north of Mozambique known as Area 4. ENI announced several major natural gas discoveries between 2011 and 2012 such as Mamba South, Mamba North, Mamba Northeast, Coral One. Topic 2010 to present. In February 2014, ENI discovered oil at its DRC offshore block. Since 2012, ENI has been selling off refining and marketing assets it owned in Eastern Europe in order to increase profitability. By 2013, ENI already reduced its refining capacity by 13%. In May 2014 ENI agreed to sell their 32.5% share in Seska Refiners A.S. CRC, a refining company in Czech Republic, to Mol Group of Hungary. In June 2014 the company signed an agreement with Sassel to acquire a 40% interest in a permit to explore 82,000 km2 offshore of South Africa's east coast. In January 2015, ENI in collaboration with Vitol Energy signed a $7 billion contract with the government of Ghana. 
This agreement was reached in order to produce oil and gas at Cape Three Points in the western region of Ghana, in an attempt to enable Ghana to meet its power and energy needs. In August 2015 ENI announced the discovery of a huge gas field off the coast of Egypt. In July 2017, the oil giant accepted responsibility for an oil spill affecting the filed coast of Blackpool in the United Kingdom. In March 2018, ENI reached an agreement with MIT to fund fusion research projects run out of the MIT Plasma Science and Fusion Center PSFC's newly created lab Laboratory for Innovation in Fusion Technologies Lift. The expected investment in these research projects will amount to about $2 million over the following years. <laughs> <laughs> Financial data Operations Topic Exploration and Production As exploration and reserve replacement being major drivers for the company, any boosts for production additions in its core oil field areas North and Sub-Saharan Africa, Venezuela, Barents Sea, Yamal Peninsula, Kazakhstan, Iraq and the Far East. ENI has about 130 exploration and production subsidiaries, such as ENI Norge. In 2012, ENI reported liquids and gas production for the full year of 1,701 kBOE, d, this being calculated assuming a natural gas conversion factor to barrel equivalent, updated to 5,492 cubic feet of gas equal 1 barrel of oil from July 1, 2012. During 2012, 60 new exploratory wells were drilled, as 56 were drilled in 2011 and 47 in 2010. The overall commercial success rate was 40%, 40.8% net to any, as compared to 42% in 2011, 38.6% net to any, and 41% in 2010, 39% net to any. In 2012-351 development wells were drilled as well, as 407 in 2011 and 399 in 2010. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Gas and power Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Natural gas In 2012, sales of natural gas were 95.32 BCM, down 1.44 BCM compared to 2011. Eni's power generation sites are located in Ferrero Erbognone, Ravenna, Livorno, Taranto, Mantova, Brindisi, Ferrara, and Bolgiano. In 2012, Eni's power generation was 25.67 terawatt hours. Overall ENI supplies 2,600 customers including large companies, power generation companies, wholesalers and distributors of natural gas for automotive use. Residential users are 7.45 million and include households, professionals, small and medium size enterprises, and public bodies located all over Italy and 2.09 million customers in European countries. International sales include Iberian Peninsula, Germany, Austria, Benelux, Hungary, UK, Northern Europe, Turkey, France markets. Topic: Power generation. Eni's electricity generation sites in Italy, as of January 2010, are the following: Natural gas power plants Brindisi 1,321 megawatts, Ferrara 61 megawatts, 
Ferrera Erbognone 1030 MW Livorno 199 MW Mantova 836 MW Ravenna 972 MW Taranto 300 MW Photovoltaic Power Plants Natuno 30 MW Topic: Refining and Marketing NE is the leader operator in refining and marketing of petroleum products in Italy. NE is engaged in retail and wholesale activities in Central Eastern European countries also Austria, France, Germany, Italy, Czech Republic, Romania, Slovakia, Slovenia, Switzerland, Hungary. Retail sales operations are conducted under the ENI and AGIP brands. The rebranding of ENI's service stations in Italy and in the rest of Europe to ENI brand is underway. Topic engineering and construction ENI operates in engineering, construction and drilling both offshore and onshore for the oil and gas industry through the subsidiary SIPEM. In April 2012, ENI in collaboration with Zytex announced the world's first offshore rigless, wireline retrievable ESP system for ENI Congo. Topic subsidiaries ENI's principal subsidiaries include, ENI Gas & Power 100% owned a natural gas and power company based in Belgium formed by merger of Distragas and Nuon Belgium Versalis 100% owned Versalis is a chemical company that manages the production and marketing of petrochemical products such as olefines, aromatics and intermediates base chemicals, styrenes, elastomers and polyethylene, plus in recent years a focus on green chemistry, being also able to count on a range of proprietary technologies, advanced plant facilities and a broad-based distribution network. Sipem 30, 54% owned Sipem is an oil and gas industry contractor. Sipem has contracted for engineering, oilfield services and construction both offshore and onshore through several pipelines, including Blue Stream, Green Stream, Nord Stream and South Stream. It is a subsidiary listed on the Italian Stock Exchange. Any UK, carries out operations in the British section of the North Sea, in the Irish Sea and off the coast of the Shetland Islands has been present in UK since 1964. In 2006 any UK's average net production of hydrocarbons was more than 141,000 bo. d. Any India, is expected to start drilling at a deepwater block 2, near Andaman and Nicobar Islands in Q2 of 2011 as it has received two-year extension for the completion of drilling program. The program was delayed due to various environmental issues and scarcity of oil rigs. Any India had won this block in 2005 and partners with ONGC and Gale India. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Legal problems. The Central Energy Italian gas holding scandal in 2005 involved ENI and Gazprom. In 2009, the European Commission filed formal antitrust charges against ENI. The Commission believes that ENI has conspired to keep competitors from using its gas pipelines. In 2009, again, according to the WikiLeaks cables, U.S. Ambassador Lanier told Washington that bribery allegations were made in Uganda by ENI, which at the time was in competition for oil assets in the country against Tullow Oil. 
The bribes were taken by the newly appointed Ugandan Prime Minister, Amuma Mbabazi, after corruption charges against the subsidiary Saipem. Eni's CFO Alessandro Benini had to resign, and the new CFO Massimo Mondazzi took over in December 2012. Eni and Royal Dutch Shell will stand trial in Italy over allegations of corruption in the 2011 purchase of a big offshore oil field in Nigeria known as OP. L245. Eni and Shell reportedly paid $1.3 billion in bribes. Sustainability Eni has been included into the Dow Jones Sustainability World Index since 2007. In 2012, Eni is confirmed on the FTSE 4 Good Index for the sixth consecutive year. In 2012, Eni is also included in the Carbon Performance Leadership Index and is the only FTSE MIB company to gain the Triple E for Standard Ethics. During 2012, Eni decreased CO2 emission that resulted from Flaring by 10% as compared to 2011. In 2013, Eni has been confirmed in the Dow Jones Sustainability Indices and, in the half yearly review in March 2014, also in the FTSE 4 Good Sustainability Index. In 2013, Eni continued its commitment to integrated reporting, preparing the annual report 2013 in accordance with the principles and contents of the integrated reporting. IR framework issued by the International Integrated Reporting Council IIRC, among the UN Sustainable Development Solution Network .In 2013 ENI led the Energy for All in Sub-Saharan Africa initiative through international collaborations aimed at devising solutions to fight against energy poverty, in particular in Sub-Saharan Africa. In 2013 ENI's commitment continued in ensuring ensuring access of local communities to energy, particularly in sub-Saharan Africa. In the first half of 2014 ENI achieved the start-up of the Porto Torres Green Chemistry Plant and the Venice Biorefinery. ENI has been ranked as the 11th best of 92 oil, gas, and mining companies on indigenous rights in the Arctic. Corporate structure Topic Board of Directors The Board of Directors is comprised as follows as of February 2017, Emma Marscaglia, former President of General Confederation of Italian Industry Chairwoman of the Board Claudio Descalzi, current CEO of Eni Andrea Gemma, Law Professor at Roma Tre University Pietro Gindani, former CEO and CFO of Vodafone Italy Karina Litvak, former Director of Ethics and Corporate Governance for F&C Asset Management Alessandro Lorenzi, former Vice President of Planning and Control at Ferrero Spa, former CFO of Coin Group, former CCO for Lavazza Diva Moriani, current CEO of KME Vorstand Fabrizio Pagani, current Secretary of Technology for Ministry of Economy and Finance Italy, former OECD Senior Advisor and Head of G8, G20 Office Alessandro Profumo, former CEO of Unicredit. See also List of petroleum companies <laughs>